do you need to micromanage outsource staff? A lot of people will sell you, tell you no, uh, but the reality is yes. Um, if you're only hiring a couple of people, you will find that they're often working from home. If they're working from home, they often have distractions. They get the, you must take the dog out. Can you uh, take me shopping? Can you pick mum up from the, the hospital? All these bits and pieces that are a distraction because they're at home and often the people around them assume they're at home make them available not that the fact that they're already being paid for a task to be working um, with you not they're not at home except physically um, so you have to make sure that you keep on top of things also if you're doing it with people from the philippines or and, and other parts of asia you find a lot of people will not bring problems to you so for example if somebody doesn't really understand something they may just sit there and just ponder over it for hours rather than saying i don't understand which is why it's important to make sure they fully understand what they're doing. But also, this is where the micromanagement comes in. You consistently check that they're grasping what you want and your expectations. Once you've developed a understanding of them and they understand you, this sort of thing gets stepped away from over a period of time. But even then, you still want to keep on top of it. There was a friend of mine that was doing... Um, some telemarketing when he was using a guy in the Philippines that was just doing it via Skype into the US for business to business sales and I said to him he says well how do you know how many calls he's making and whatever well he says well his sales have dropped down I says oh, he hasn't been dialing any of your calls I can tell you that now and then when he checked his Skype credits and stuff they hadn't moved the the guy hadn't been dialing anybody for at least a week those are the sort of things you need to keep on top of. If you suddenly see that like that is an easy thing to do, just check how much he costs every day on your Skype. If it suddenly dips, then he hasn't been dialing. Um, sorry, if it doesn't change, if it dips, it means he's been dialing a lot. But the, the point is you need to find ways to keep track of people and making sure that they're working. Um, for example, Skype me at 9 a.m. when you get to the office. Skype me at 12 o'clock and I'll have a five minute catch up. These sort of things to make sure people are doing what you need them to do and they understand what you want. Um, over a period of time you do build up, like I said, you build up some confidence in people but don't remove those bits of micromanagement and keeping on top of them because what happens is they often will end up abused, maybe not by them directly, but it could be the fact that if you say, well, don't don't bother with the, the 12 o'clock Skype call, they're, if they're working from home and somebody else knows that, they'll say, I'll tell you what, let's go out for dinner. And then they're not working for the next two hours and you're unaware of it. So you do need to keep these things in place. And the same as keeping task-based because it's the main way to keep control over people that are doing specific tasks. Even if it's a, you know, you say, right, we'll get on, on the call, we're doing this, and I want this done by one o'clock today. At least you're setting a timetable of expectation. And I know myself, I don't like working nine till five. Um, I personally work as and when needed. It, I find it's more productive because for example, if I'm at a um, hotel at 8 p.m. at night, I will sit and do documentation and emails for the following morning. So the expectation of me being in the office at half past seven isn't really needed because I've already done all the work. In fact, everybody arriving at nine o'clock are already getting my replies and I wouldn't expect much off them till probably 11 because when they get into the office, They've got all the other bits and pieces to do, then the paperwork, and, and then slowly catch up to where I am. Um, but I know some people are like, oh, I want you to be here at this time, blah, blah, blah. If you're paying on an hourly rate, I agree. But I personally like task-based um, because I find it's more, um, more beneficial all around. 
because you do get that bit of leeway, but at the same time, it still needs to be managed. On myself, you still get the same amount of hours out. I mean, one of the disputes I had with the last company was the fact is I worked over 55 hours a week, now only pay for 37 and a half. Um, but that's another story. But the the whole point is you need to manage the expectations. And if you keep on top of it, micromanage, make sure they understand everything, go through things maybe a couple of times, you know, go through it the first time, then ask them, explain it back to you, you will cut down on issues. Um, because the last thing you need, for example, if I was getting somebody to do me a presentation for tomorrow morning, and it's six o'clock here at night, I push it through to the Philippines because on a different time zone, I can go to sleep and wake up and have it finished. They need to make sure it's right because the problem I've got, if it's not right, I'm going to look a bit stupid first thing in the morning when I go through it and go, they've done this all wrong and I don't have enough time to correct it. So this is the important bit in making sure you structure it right to get the right outputs. You need to make sure you've got the right inputs and they understand what the input should be. Thanks for watching.